Okay, let's take a look at our scriptures for today. James chapter 5, verses 13 through 20. Would uh, someone be willing to read all of the scriptures for us to start off? You want everything? Yes, please. Okay. Thank you. Are you among, and are any among you suffering? They should pray. Are you cheerful? They should sing songs of praise. Are any among you sick? They should call for the elders of the church and have them pray over them, anointing them with oil in the name of the Lord. The prayer of faith will save the sick, and the Lord will raise them up, and anyone who has committed sins will be forgiven. Therefore, confess your sins to one another and pray for one another so that you may be healed. The prayer of the righteous is powerful and effective. Elijah was a human being like us, and he prayed fervently that it might not rain. And for three years and six months, it did not rain on the earth. Then he prayed again, and the heaven gave rain, and the earth yielded its harvest. My brothers and sisters, if anyone among you wanders from the truth and is brought back by another, you should know that whoever brings back a sinner from wandering will save the sinner's soul from death and will cover a multitude of sins. Thank you very much. On the surface, looking at these scriptures, what do you get from it? What, what do you think the message is there? It tells how powerful prayer is. Is it just enough to pray? And if I could rechange it, my sermon title is when to pray, but I think after I've studied it all week, is, is it just enough to pray? Good point. Well, didn't we read a couple Sunday, a Sunday or two ago about it's how you pray? <clears throat> like, is it for, like, like, what's your faith behind your prayer? Like, for lack of a better <laughs> A righteous prayer, it, yeah, 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 or, or an unrighteous prayer, or a worldly prayer as opposed to spiritual prayer. I thought of you this week, Randy. I, you know, um, when you dealt with cancer, um, the elders should have anointed you with oil. Um, I don't know why we didn't. I never have. I've, we've laid hands upon people before, but mm -hmm. I've never anointed anybody with oil. I didn't know our church believed in that. Um, we believe in prayer, don't we? Yeah, obviously. I mean, we've never done it, but yeah. who's to say we shouldn't start? I, I like this for me first. to pray to for someone is one thing, but to go through a ceremony like this is a altogether different yeah yeah that's maybe it's not in what you do but you're putting the good intentions behind what you do you know whether it's through prayer or that it's trying to connect with god and in a very meaningful purposeful way to help someone else you know whether you want to call it prayer or, or if it's a ceremony i think it's what's in your mind and your intentions behind that action I think is the most important thing. Okay. Anybody else have any thoughts? When I first looked at this, again, it's amazing to me how normally when I'm preparing for a lesson, you look at the scripture and it's like, oh man, how am I going to, how are we going to talk for 30 minutes about these scriptures, it's cut and dry. There's not much. Try to preach 20 minutes on. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. I, and then as I got into it, over and over, the more I got to, the more, the more that was revealed. And it's, I find it's, there's so much information and so much in here, it's kind of overwhelming. And it left me with a lot of questions. And I'd like to kind of dig into that a little more. Starting out, it says, Is anyone among you in trouble? 
let them pray. Is anyone happy? Let them sing songs of praise. If anyone is sick, let them call the elders to pray over them and anoint them in oil. In the name of the Lord. That's a key. So, basically, when we're going through the valleys, the sickness, <clears throat> our little child swallows a thumbtack, when we're going through things, is, is that not the time we pray the most, usually? I mean, it's like the world stops, and we start calling on Jesus. I mean, everybody, that's kind of a natural thing. So, the way I look at that a little bit is, as we're going through the valleys, be it sickness, be it work stress, be it family situations, isn't that one of the times, or really the time in our life that we grow our faith the most and we don't we get stronger and closer to God during those times? I think for sure. I know I, I do. Know that. But I think it's also equally important that when things are going well, we let God know. Thank you. I in, in my walk, I have learned, and it's something that I make a conscious effort to do, mm -hmm. is to thank God when things are good. And again, I, I've talked a little bit lately about music. I don't sing good, but I like to make a joyful noise. And that's a way of worshiping God. And it's all of basically what it's saying to us whether life is good, whether life is bad, pray to God. Work on our relationship to God. Another aspect to when you're sick and going through things, pray. How many of us have a little bit of a hard time when things are going great, we got everything under control, we're walking the walk, we're talking the talk, and everything's good. How many of us kind of forget a little bit about praying to God? Oh God, today you help me do this. Oh God, today you help me do that. And that's one of the reasons that when, when I'm going to be leading Sunday school, that will be the question. What has God done for you this week? Because I think it's just really, really important for us to give God credit for how He, what he does for us. Now, there is a little bit of a selfish note to that, too. Because God basically wants our fellowship. We were put here on earth in the likeness of God to fellowship with him. And when we turn away and don't spend as much time with God, what's probably going to happen soon? Just in our life. Yeah, and it ain't going to be pretty a lot of times. God will stop us. He will humble us. He will put us on our knees or in bed suffering from whatever. Now, and again, in my own selfish little mind, it's like, okay, if God is going to make things good, I want to, to be diligent to give him praise and thanks for that. Because I'd like it to last a little longer. I, I don't really want to get cancer again or, or whatever it is. So it's important that we do that. Now, it says, let them call the elders. Let them call the elders of the church to pray. And anoint them with oil. Why should we call the elders? And first of all, who are the elders? leaders of the church. Okay. I'm an elder. 
I'm a preachy elder. That's mm-hmm. the way I look at myself. You want to name them or? No, I guess what I'm. The elders are the people that are appointed as elders. Or called, but I think. Called to be elders. I think maybe they're the best example it within the church. They should be who people look up to be look look up to as an example as leaders who have strong faith, I guess. So, You've said that word twice now this morning, and I appreciate that. What that's word? Faith. Oh. <laughs> um, that's what it's really that's what it's all about. Um, but I, I do feel there is an official title of an elder, and we have six here. But what do you think about people that are mature, that are kind of leaders of the church, that don't have the title elder? Can we look at them as elders? Sure. I think so. Uh, there's a lot of people here in church that, in this church, in all churches probably, that aren't officially elders, but they are truly leaders and spiritually mature, deep, deep faith people. So why would we call on the elders when we're sick? Well, I think you got to take James where he's at at this particular time. You got to put a little history within it. James is trying to train a group of Jewish Christians about Christianity. So, as Jews, they would have went to the synagogue. They would have went to the Scribes, priests, Pharisees, is who they went to. So he's trying to say these are the people, the leaders of the church. He could have, he could have just said the leaders of the church, but he uses the word elders here. Has anybody got a new translation that doesn't say elders? In uh, 14, everybody says elders. I, I, I didn't look at any other version this week since I wasn't teaching. But, um, so, yeah. Okay. I, I would have wished that, and I know you were going crazy, so you never thought about it. I wish you would text me because Sunday mornings I never look at Facebook. And they come in and they said, Well, how is Josh? How is Josh? He had a birthday party last night. It's the last thing I saw. Late. I mean, it was late. Well, I know. I know. <laughs> but I think that's. You, you put it on Facebook. You, you did the right thing. You put it in our church yeah. page where people could see it. I just didn't see it. It was on Sunday morning. That's right. Facebook is the farthest thing from my mind. But um, I think that's why he uses the words elders here. Okay. I look at it this way. If, if you're sick or a loved one is sick, who do you want praying for them? A non-believer, an, an atheist, no, no offense to, to these people, someone who doesn't believe, or someone who has strong faith. And the elders are supposed to have strong faith. And I believe that their faith... Would get would help heal versus someone you know God willing and versus someone who didn't really believe in and good wishes to get you know like like who didn't really have faith in God mm-hmm. in in the power of prayer. You, you keep using that word. That that's, word that's great. Right. I appreciate it. A um, <laughs> um, couple points here when. In, in our lives, when you're suffering, when you're going through something, do you feel then at your strongest, closest to God, that you're on top of the mountain spiritually? Or are you feeling a little powerless? Yeah, yeah. When we're suffering, we are not feeling our strongest. Now, when we want somebody to pray for us, we want somebody to pray for us who is going to be able to get us healing, get us relief. That is going to 
and, and the prime example of that would be people that are elder and elder mature Christians in the church. The, the, the absolute key to all of that is that the faith is what enables the healing. The healing comes from God, but it comes from God because of the faith. If we don't believe, it's probably, I mean, it, it could be that it's God's will, but if we don't believe, I wouldn't be expecting an answer. How many times did Jesus, when he healed somebody, said, your faith has made you well? Exactly. That, that's that's I it. I don't try to count them, but. Yeah. Yeah. It's throughout the Bible. Yeah. Yep. And then, um, <clears throat> there's a place in where, in the Bible, in Mark 6, verses 5 and 6, God didn't perform, or Jesus didn't perform miracles. Why? And that he was in his own hometown. People didn't have faith in him. And it, it says in those scriptures that he did not perform as many miracles. And it was because the people, because that was, it says a, a prophet doesn't have strength or is, isn't, Casey, do you have that? Uh, six what? Five and six. Yeah, he could not do any miracles there except lay his hands on a few sick people and heal them. And he was amazed at their lack of faith. <clears throat> yep. The lack of faith. <laughs> but I think it's funny they downplay, eh, just lay your hands on them and they were healed, but no big deal. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Laying hands on and anointing with oil are very, very similar. Now, in the Bible times, oil, they actually used it as a medicine. They felt it had healing properties, but not only did they use it secularly as a medicine, but it really got its start being used in religious ceremonies and by religious to anoint with oil. And again, it's only because of the faith, or it is because of the faith, and the anointing of the oil was done by elders and priests. So, again, those are what we would hope to be the most mature, the most faith-filled people. They enabled the healing and the anointing of, with oil enabled that to happen. So, again, it's all about faith. Even in Jesus' hometown, when he was there, the people didn't have faith in him. They didn't believe. It's like, oh, this is the carpenter's kid. He can't do anything. So, faith is what it's all about. And that's why we would want to call mature people in the church to pray for us. Now, I have this, I'm not sure about this. So, this brings so much thoughts and we won't solve this today, but it says the prayer offered in faith will make the sick person well. So a prayer based on faith make the sick well. The Lord will raise them up. If they have sinned, they will be forgiven. So somebody's sick, if there's they, they prayed for healing, and if they've got sin in their life, they're going to be forgiven their sin. And this is because in a lot of churches, and, and a lot of the early belief was, well, this happened to you because of sin in your life. Or because your parents or grandparents or some descendants, and you're paying for this. Somebody sinned. Yep. <clears throat> now, do you think that's accurate? Do you think that's what the Bible taught us? No, because Jesus, they asked about the beggar, the blind man. Right. What did his parents do? And he right. said his parents didn't do anything. Yep. And he's been here. He's here for me to, to reveal my power. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So 
I, I read a bunch about that and mm -hmm. I struggled with it and I still feel more than a little, I, I just, I believe what Denny says is true and it's, it's in the Bible, um, but I just don't equate sickness and illness with sin. And I, I think God teaches us that's not what it's all about. Okay. What about, therefore, confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you may be healed? So, is that telling me that when I have sinned, I need to go to the elders? Or Denny, hey Denny, I need your prayer. I've done this. Is that what it's telling us? If you're Catholic, I guess. You go to the what booth and talk to the priest. What it's telling us then. <laughs> you know, oh. I mean, it's building a community of faith and church. Yeah. You know, the whole concept of confessing our sins to people as well as God, it has a, a, a deep, there's a lot to it. And there's a lot of power associated with confessing our sins to other people. And I'm not going to get into whether it's right or wrong well, or the whatever. The Catholics do it today with the confessional. I'm sorry? The Catholics still do it today with the confessional. I, um, I, I, th I think other churches do it as well. Uh, so I mean it's it's yeah. still practiced today it is and in the 12 step programs and there's yeah. bunches of those yeah. the, the, the fifth step is admit to God to ourself and to another human being what we've done and quite frankly there is a huge release that comes from admitting our failures to other people but it has to be done in the right situation you don't just go spill your beans to anybody it has to be done again to elders or leaders in the church and they hopefully are faith-filled strong enough that there's not going to be judgment there's just going to be honest prayer and through that comes a Really, it comes a huge, deep level of healing that uh, kind of has to be experienced to believe. I was kind of trying about when you try to right the wrong. Like, if you wronged somebody, <clears throat> ideally you would try to make it right with them. But if they've passed on or something, then you, you know, it might be helpful for you to move on and put that out there if you confess to somebody else. But I think it's more effective to try to go to the source to make it right if you can. I couldn't agree more, and I think I appreciate you bringing that up. I think that's a, a huge example of what we're talking about. Yeah. What do you think that in the in the Bible times there were a lot of miracles done? I mean, there's just the whole Bible is full of kind of miracles. Why do we not see more miracles now? Because we don't look for them. That's one. Why do you think we don't look for them? Probably because we're too self-involved with ourselves. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, way more so than that. But I think one level deeper than that, in the Bible times, it's like, there's Jesus. Oh, look, he just healed that leper. He just healed that crippled person. I saw it with my own two eyes. Or my cousin Joe told me about it. He was there. He saw it. Do you think he can heal somebody? I believe it. Today, is our faith as strong as it, generally speaking, as it was in those days? I think not. I think... We're more skeptical of things. Yeah. We're a little more dated. Yeah. Yeah. Oh man, yeah. we are taught to look for that can't be true because you need to look deeper. That's that's not right. So yeah, I think 
everything I read in the Bible talks about the strength of our faith. And to a large extent, that's the key to pretty much everything spiritually related. But yet, it's one of the things that we struggle the most with. It's, can God really do this? Will God really do this? But we're asked to do it secondhand. Yes. I mean, well, if, if, if you read the end of Matthew right before Jesus ascends, it says some still doubt it. Mm -hmm. And they had seen it all. And they still doubt it. Yep. We never saw it. We've read about it. But we never, the miracles that he performed in the Bible, we never physically saw. We've read about them. And I believe they're true. Oh, yeah. If every one of them is true. Yeah. Um, but we didn't see them. But I've seen miracles. Yeah. I've been part of miracles. That's I've been great. saved. Well, even developing the medicine for cancer is a miracle in and of itself. Um, I'm sure. Yeah. Uh, God hadn't given the knowledge to these doctors and researchers. Yep. yep. We wouldn't be able to fight cancer at all. Tuberculosis and its time. Yeah. And all the people that died from it. Smallpox and all that. Yeah, yeah I mean, pick, pick yeah. your pick your disease. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. I mean, really. Yeah. You know what? One quick thing, then we'll go. Um, one of the next scriptures, it says, The prayer of a righteous person is powerful and effective. And King James Version says, The effectual, fervent prayer of a righteous person availeth much. And it's talking about Elijah being a human being. Elijah was the person, one of the people that went up into heaven while he was alive. Talk about faith. Now, can can we have that same level of faith? And I have always thought of well, Elijah was he was like superhuman, or he wouldn't have been able to do that. Elijah was a person just like you and me. Elijah had issues. Elijah was no more perfect than you or me. And there's a whole list of scriptures that I read that talked about Elijah's humanisms. He was just a person. If Elijah could develop his faith, being just like me and you, we can do the same thing. Now, I'm not expecting God to bring me up to heaven while I'm still alive, but I certainly would like to have a stronger faith. And sometimes my humanity is what holds me back. It's like, I'm not perfect. I have sinned. I have fallen short. I can't ex be expected to be that faithful. So that gives me a lot of hope. Because um, exactly. I never thought of it that way. You think of Jesus and people who argue, well, he's technically God. And, yeah. you know, he's so he doesn't count. He's perfect. And then you have yeah. an example of another human being that can reach yes. another example Extremes of faith, yeah. Yeah, and that's my whole reason for bringing that up, because it did exactly that for me, too. Yeah, I never did. You know, that. I struggle with my faith, my spirituality, but it's like, Elijah is a perfect example. He had the same human issues that you and I have. He did it, so can you. So can I. Thank you. Um, Denny, would you close the Sure. Love it. Right. <clears throat> Your gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you for today's lesson and thank Randy for, for laying it out for us. And dear Lord, we need to, to pray more fervently and have greater faith and to put that faith into action as we live our daily lives and be with us, and we know we're going to have shortcomings, and be with us during those as well. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. Thanks. Thank you, Randy. Thank you, Randy. You're welcome. Thank you. There was a whole other part to this lesson that talks about how to pray, and we talked a few weeks back about praying that if this be Jesus, if this, please heal this person if it be your will. But... All of the examples in the Bible, 
doesn't say, well, Jesus, if you want him to walk, please help him. It says, heal this person. And that's kind of, our prayers should be modeled after that. We always close with, if, you know, we pray this in Jesus' name. But we need to pray with the faith and have strong faith to ask what we want and then turn it over to God. So, thank you.